So um, I'm Yun Sik Cho from Chungwang University, Korea, and the title of the paper is Decoupled Variational Graph Autoencoder for Link Predictions. So um, we're living in a world where graph structure data is everywhere. So we have social network that explains the relationship between the users, citation network that explains the relationship between the authors. We also have co-purchase network that bundles the item for becoming the system. Protein interaction network that, ex uh, that allows us to ident identify the genes. We also have knowledge graph for knowledge reasoning. So, and uh, we would like to focus on the, uh, one of the main tasks in graph, which is link prediction. And this is the one of the main challenge in graph structure data. And here we uh, want to evaluate the similarity between the pair of nodes. And we want to perform the link prediction based on the observed link with the node attributes um, associated. And here, I want to mention that I'm focusing on the static graph. And GCN learns representation from the node attributes uh, effectively. So um, researchers have been using GCNs because it automatically learns the node attributes with its labels. And um, uh, in this paper, we study link prediction on variational autoencoder, and uh, which is the generated model uh, that generates the link on graph structure data. And VGAE has a um, GCN as an encoder and inner product for a decoder. And here, our goal is to learn the best embedding that reconstructs the uh, network. And as, as you as you know, uh, VGAE has been extended in many ways and have um, proven have have shown proven performances with this flexibility. And here's a, another point of view of uh, VGAE. You can view this as an inference model and generative model, where the inference model, uh, you try to um, infer the node embedding ZIs here. So I don't know whether, oops. OK, ZIs here. And uh, based on the um, input X, where X is the uh, node attributes, and A is the adjacency metrics. And we simply use GCN for learning this mean vector and variance vector. And we also have the generative model where, where we try to um, compute the probability of the link uh, between a node A, I and J. Um, given the um, embedding of the I and J, we simply uh, perform the uh, dot product and then um, pass it to the sigmoidal function, and which returns the probability. Um, however, we found that there's an interesting limitation in the inner product. And we found that there's a suboptimal performances in low degree nodes and high degree nodes. This is because. Um, we found that low degree nodes uh, favor uh, norm. Uh, sorry, um, maybe I, I might want to explain this uh, inner product first. Uh, inner product, as you might have known, it can be um, um, computed with the uh, norm multiplied by cosine similarity, right? So if you focus on the um, high degree nodes or uh, low degree nodes, we found that the, uh, these tend to update norms instead of uh, uh, homophily, like direction of the um, vectors, because that's more easy for them to update. So that's the limitation of the current VGAE. So we're trying to overcome this limitation. So um, in other words, uh, what I can say is that the cosine similarity has minimal effect on these low degree nodes and high degree nodes. And they have very few chances uh, to perform update on the directional components. And another limitation we found is, um, maybe you, you might want to focus on this figure on the left corner. So imagine that you're, um, you have, we have a gray node here in the center. And we have two neighbors in blue, and they share some similarity in some, in some sense. Like, sharing, it, it could be uh, close by fr friends of you. And you also have a red node, which is a popular node. And uh, this tend to be uh, um, like kind of uh, far from your attributes. And imagine that this could be a popular person that you, don't, you follow, but doesn't necessarily share something in common. And you, you, we have this in real world life, right? And um, in VGAE, what, uh, what it does is that those red nodes tend to have high norms or high, high magnitude. So if you perform a message passing, uh, this could be dominated unexpectedly. So uh, you can say that this hinders the learning of the node embeddings, That's, uh, which is the uh, problem, which is the motivation of this study. So uh, based on this observation, we want to effectively decouple the, the, the similarity and norm. And specifically, we want to relate the norm and cosine similarity to two fundamental pr principles in graph, which is um, node popularity and homophily. And we, we are proposing a model uh, based on VGAE that could be uh, decoupling the two effects. And uh, we, we have two main research questions. Uh, we want to see whether our model can achieve a better link prediction. And we also want to see whether the node embeddings that we found in the homophily region 
uh, could do better um, downstream tests, such as the node classification. Um, however, the problem here is that decoupling the two is not trivial. Uh, this is because uh, only the link is observed, and we don't know whether that link has been um, generated based on homophily or node popularity. So that brings us to use the EM-like approach. So um, here, uh, this we use EM-like approach, and, and we want to effectively decouple the two, and we propose a hard EM algorithm. So we sto stochastically collect the prom promising scenario of the two, which is homophily versus uh, node popularity. And we, uh, we actually directly use the node popularity because um, uh, node homophily is well explained through the node attributes, while as the node popularity cannot be explained directly. So we, we are going to kind of by using uh, indirect approach for node popularity. So this is a generated process uh, for our model. We first sample uh, the uh, node latent variable uh, on a homophily space. We call it like ZIH uh, for homophily. So, and we also sample that uh, the, for the node popularity as well. And you can think this as a conventional VGAE, uh, which only uses the directional component. And you can also think this as a kind of a scalar um, for easy understanding. So we have these two components, and then we are going to use this for generating links. So we are using um, this two-stage two, two process. So for homophily, we sample a link based on the similarity measurement, which is the cosine similarity. And we're go basically giving a second chance. So whenever there's a non-link, we, we uh, let the model uh, to generate a, another link based on the node popularity. So this is the node popularity score. So I'll leave, leave it, the details in the paper. And uh, this is the main framework of our model. So we have like E-step and M-step. So in the E-step, we perform a forward pass and we compute the probability of homophily generating a link. And then we sample the links on these probabilities. And then uh, we get, give, it, uh, give a second chance for a node popularity. So we use these two probabilities and then compare with the ground truth. And uh, we perform back propagation with it. And then since we know, the, since we know uh, which has been triggered, we respectively um, uh, perform back propagation uh, either on this one or either on this one. So in, in a way, you can consider this as a, a winner take the gradient strategy. And that brings us to the uh, experimental results. So this is the experimental results uh, I would like to share. And uh, this is the main results that we have. We uh, tested with the um, standard data set, which is Cora sites here and PubMed. And, um, we also follow the uh, standard protocol, which is like 85% of the links has been used for training and 5% for uh, validation and 10% of links for testing. And we also use 10% of non-links uh, to make it as a classification task. And you could see that our model is performing uh, pretty well on Cora, uh, both on Cora sites here and PubMed. We are achieving the state of the art performances. We've compared with the, all the uh, models that has been achieving with the um, SOTA results. We additionally use uh, four larger data sets, which is CS, physics, computer photos, and uh, we also confirm that VGNA is the previous uh, SOTA model. I forgot to add the citations here. Um, but uh, we, uh, we were able to achieve much better performance than the previous SOTA model. And um, uh, these are the statistics of the data sets. Um, these, you can see that the CES and physics and computer photo are larger and denser than the um, Cora sites here and PubMed. And we perform ablation study. And here uh, we want to compare our model to two additional models, which is, I'm going to simply call this AMP in orange bar. And we also have the previous SOTA model, which is VGNA in blue bar. So, our model in green always achieved the best performance across all the data. And you can see we additionally propose a VGAE AMP model uh, just for comparison purposes. So you can think this as a, we're considering node popularity also, but we're not decoupling the two effects. Okay, so this is, these are coupled, still coupled, but we're uh, treating this separately. And you can see that uh, AMP models um, achieve better performances in some, some data set better than the VGNA, which is the previous SOTA model, but it doesn't perform better than the VGNA in some other data set. And we found that these two data set is very small and very sparse. So in those cases, this model performs very well, but uh, when, when we look at the denser data set, um, AMP models performs better. Oops, sorry, I 
sacrifice, <laughs> get this one. And we also uh, additionally performed another uh, round of ablation study. Uh, here, uh, we wanted to see whether the homophily only um, embeddings that we get from the DV DVGAE can still perform better than the previous sort of features VGNA. And we were able to see that the uh, VGAE without the node popularity, and we use only homophily only, and still performs better than the previous SOTA. And this reveals that the uh, directional embeddings are very clear and accurate when we are, ta when we are taking out the magnitudes, so that they don't interfere with each other anymore. And uh, this is another downstream task. So we use the embedding of the directional components for node classification, and we were able to see that they're uh, achieving better performance on uh, the um, node classification. We, we perform node classification on these data sets. <coughs> and finally, we performed uh, visualizations. So we used uh, directional component for visualizations here. And then um, we used TS2Net and then uh, did a clustering. And we try to compare whether the same class labels uh, are close to each other or far apart uh, be between the different classes. Uh, I want to mention that these class labels has been only used for visualization purposes and hasn't been used during training. So that brings us to the conclusion. So this is the motivation of our study. So we found that the inner product of the uh, decoder in the VGAE is limited because they are um, kind of uh, interfering each other. So we want to decouple the two effects. However, they are both too important. And our contribution is we propose a end-to-end mo end -end model which could effectively decouple the two, and, and we were able to achieve the state-of-the-art performances in the prediction. And we can also um, apply the embeddings which we learned in the homophily region, um, and then we can perform on very interesting downstream task. And thank you. I'd like to answer your questions.